In this video, I'll be going over one of the most important and overlooked aspects of a home theater, the acoustics. Now, while people building a home theater tend to think about the size of the screen, the popcorn machine, sound system, or seating, here at Audio Advice, we think that you should give equal consideration to the acoustics of your room and how it will impact the performance. So, in this video, we're gonna go over the basic concepts anyone with a home theater or media room can take to improve the performance of their system. Now, instead of doing a deep dive into how to create an acoustically perfect home theater, we're gonna give you some tips on how to do some simple and inexpensive things that can have a dramatic effect on bettering the sound and enjoyment of your system. Now, let's get started. Before we start, we do offer professional home theater design for those of you who wanna take it to the next level and build the absolute perfect home theater. Now we can help guide you every step of the way from choosing speakers, projectors, the layout, and even build you a 3D rendering to make sure it looks exactly what you're looking for. Now if you're interested, reach out to our team at audioadvice.com for more information. Now let's get back to the basics. While it's easy and a ton of fun to get wrapped up in planning out a special look for your home theater, we do want you to think about how that look will affect your experience. A room may look like a theater, but if you can't comfortably sit down and immerse yourself in a film for hours on end, or if you can't pick up on the subtle emotional qualities in the actor's voices, while at the same time fully appreciating that big action scene, you're not really getting the experience that you should be looking for. A theater that has addressed acoustics enables the movies to be far more involving. They draw you in and you can connect with them in an entirely different way. Now that, my friends, is what a great home theater experience is all about. Escaping from the stress of our work lives and immersing yourself in another world for a couple of hours. Achieving this kind of great sound really comes down to two primary things. First, a well thought out speaker plan for your room, which you can explore with our free home theater design tool that we'll link below. And second, making sure the acoustic signature of your room enhances the experience instead of totally destroying the sound that your great speakers are reproducing. Now, let's look at some acoustic basics. Getting great acoustics comes down to one simple concept, controlling reflections. Now, as you probably know, sound covers a pretty broad spectrum from the lowest low bass rumbles of an explosion to that sparkling hi-hat, and the critical human voice falls right there in the middle. Now, as the low bass tone from your speakers or subwoofers bounce around the listening room, depending on your room's dimensions, those tones will build up in certain areas of the room and cause two problems. Some low tones will be totally canceled out by the reflections and you'll hear very little bass, yet other tones will get more pronounced and overwhelm other frequencies. Now these are called modes. Rooms with equal dimensions tend to have more problematic modes. Also, as a general rule of thumb, the smaller the room, the more issues you're gonna have. Higher frequencies can also reflect, bouncing around your room, degrading the sound quality, and making it difficult to understand spoken voices. Now let's look at some options to help the bass performance in your theater. If you're lucky enough to be building your home theater room from scratch or have some flexibility in the room dimensions, having a more rectangular shaped room is best. The golden ratio of 1 to 1.6 to 2.6 is a good way to go, with the first number being the height of the room and the other two being the length and the width. For example, a room with a 10 foot high ceiling, 16 feet wide and 26 feet long would be good. Of course, if you're working with audio advice on your home theater design, we will help you find the perfect ideal room dimensions for your unique situation. If your room is like many family rooms that we see in modern homes, you may have many openings and it will be pretty far from a standard rectangle. While your initial reaction might be that this is a bad thing, actually depending on the shape and the dimensions, it could actually work out in your favor, at least when it comes to the lower frequencies. A few models of subwoofers come with a microphone kit for room correction. A typical room correction system involves placing the microphone in the primary or several of the seating positions. The system then plays some test tones and finds the peaks and the valleys. While it's nearly impossible to bring up the dips, these systems can do a good job of bringing down the peaks, providing more even bass response. Many of the better home theater receivers also now include room correction that will greatly improve the bass response across your entire room. Having more than one subwoofer in a room will do wonders to minimize bass modes. When you have the energy coming from different places in the room, the modes tend to smooth out. Two is better than one, and four is even better than two. Doing something like this will give you and your guests even more bass response in more seating positions in your theater room. And while room correction is great, 
Starting out with your subwoofer or multiple subs in the best position will also make a huge difference. Now you can learn how to set up a subwoofer and your subwoofer placement options in our home theater education video series that we've linked in the description below. One other solution to bass modes is to use acoustic treatments called bass traps. These are typically placed in the corners of your room. Bass traps have to be pretty large in size in order to trap the low bass. There are some mixed opinions in the audio community on their use, but used with the right discretion, they can be a great choice. But please be mindful that while they can capture lower frequencies and reduce modes, they also drastically reduce bass impact. As you can see, this part of the equation has many variables. At Audio Advice, our team of experts can look at your room plans and make suggestions based on our years of experience. While we certainly enjoy the aesthetics and design of a beautiful home theater, we love getting caught up in the details like this when helping you design your room. If you've ever been in an empty room with nothing but sheetrock walls, you know what upper frequency reflections sound like. It's got almost like an echo chamber effect. If you want to be able to understand the dialogue and experience the subtleties and emotion in voices or hear immersive surround sound, controlling these reflections is essential. There are many choices for helping to reduce high frequency reflections. Of course, in a home theater, this usually means acoustic treatments and acoustic panels. While this video is specifically focused on acoustics for dedicated home theaters, I do realize that many of you may have more of an open concept media room. Now in this case, acoustic panels may not really pass the aesthetics test. What we're really trying to do here is eliminate the chance of sound bouncing off the walls and the windows and reflecting back at us, competing with other sounds. Now if we can tame the sound at first reflection points, we can keep most of it from continuing to echo around the room. The best rule of thumb is to think soft or irregular. Large house plants, and even if they aren't even real, or heavy curtains, area rugs, tapestries, and other wall hangings will actually make a huge difference here. One easy way to find the reflection points is to sit in your main chair and have someone walk around the side walls holding a mirror against the wall. When they get to a spot where you can see the speaker in that mirror, you have just found a reflection point. Dedicated home theater room will have the most options for acoustic treatments. This can range from basic absorptive wall panels spread out on your wall to a full-blown acoustic treatment package hidden behind some custom stretched fabric system that covers the entire wall surfaces. In a perfect world, the acoustic treatments of your room will disappear into the aesthetic and allow your carefully selected home theater equipment to really shine. Now, a full-blown acoustic design may include several different types of panels placed strategically on your walls. This is the ultimate way to go, but for the purposes of this video, I'm focusing on the best value, which will be panels that absorb sound. But if you are getting into higher performance gear, you should definitely consider investing in a complete acoustics package, which our team of experts can help you out with. An important point to note is that some reflections are actually really important. It's really about finding a balance and eliminating the modes more than deadening all the sound. If you completely cover your room to the point where you can only absorb sound, you will wind up with a theater that lacks a sense of dynamics. The most well-designed theaters will find the perfect balance between absorptive, reflective, and dispersing panels strategically placed around the room. If you're digging around, you may see something that's called RT60. This is a measurement of how long it takes the initial burst of sound to drop by 60 dB after the sound stops coming out of your speakers. The number that you're shooting for here will vary with the size of your room. We suggest you not get too wrapped up in that number unless you're going for an all out design and first think about taming the reflections instead. That's what mostly is used to get an acceptable RT60 number to start with anyways. Now if you're trying to get the most bang for your buck, placing a few absorptive panels around the room is probably going to be your best bet to start. A good rule of thumb for this method is to calculate the total surface area of your two sidewalls and get acoustic panels that will fill up about 35-40% to 40 of that area. You can greatly improve a room that is just painted sheetrock by doing this for the two sidewalls, rear walls, and either side of the screen with just a few panels. And be sure to use the mirror method we described to place some of them at the first reflection points of your main speakers. The center channel speaker is perhaps the most important speaker in a surround sound system. This is where the majority of your dialogue was going to come from. Ideally, you would want your center channel on a dedicated stand, away from other surfaces, so that the only thing coming through are the pure sounds of the speaker. Of course, in the real world, this is rarely what happens. Oftentimes, we come into an existing home theater only to find the critically important center channel is relegated to a cabinet to hide it. 
While the designers or cabinet makers may have the best intentions here, a lack of experience or attention to detail in this area means that the most center channels in cabinets just don't sound very good. The issues come down to the resonance produced by the wooden cabinet. Certain frequencies will cause the cabinet to add some of its own coloration to the sound, often making voices sound muffled as if actors are talking with their hands cupped in front of their mouth. At Audio Advice, we are purists, so we usually recommend having the center channel unencumbered. At the same time, we realize that for many of you, it just has to be in a cabinet. Luckily, in many of the decades of installing home theaters that we've done, we've picked up a few tricks along the way, and we just so happen to have one to address this problem. For the sake of time and the fact that we have an entire dedicated video to it, I'll let you go to the link in the description if you want to learn more about how to place your center channel. We have a whole series of home theater tips and tricks that you'll find in the description below. And if you're designing a room from scratch, we hope you'll consider the acoustics from the beginning. But even then, the acoustics and acoustic treatments themselves are only one piece to the puzzle. Understanding sight lines, choosing a screen size, picking your home theater furniture, choosing your equipment, and making sure everything is properly calibrated are also important elements that help bring a theater to life. If you purchase your gear from Audio Advice, you'll have our team of home theater experts there for you for any questions you might have. With their expertise and our vast library of home theater tips and tricks, you should be able to create an awesome experience. Or should you want a complete design to take any worry away, we would love to help you out with that as well. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and turn on the notifications so you don't miss out on any of our latest content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.